The amazing thing we found out that we are twins because we both like water and we have the same glasses. I don't know what this means, but I'm really pretty sure this will be a really fantastic podcast. Hello, my name is Wolfgang Jiram, and I'm the host for this wonderful EO podcast. And um, three things you should know about me are I'm a former president of the EO chapter here in Hamburg. The second thing you should know about me is I'm currently building a bridge between American, uh, African and um, European female entrepreneurs. And the third thing you should know is that every morning I get up and embarrass my family with my morning routine because I love to dance barefoot in the garden. Okay, now it's out, now it's public. Anyhow, I have the great gift and honor to have this wonderful podcast today with you, Maria. Um, a you. wonderful woman from Sofia in Bulgaria. And I've, I tried to say your name perfectly. It's Maria Gergova Bengtsson. Yes, right. Mm. It is. So a few things about you. Like maybe you tell me if they're right or wrong, okay? Sure. So um, the first thing is you have a hairdresser date tomorrow. Oh, sure. I do. Finally. Like, how am I gay? Like, how amazing. <laughs> and you still look amazing. Like, I still wonder, like, how you do this. Like, because one day before the hairdresser, I look, uh, you don't want to know. <laughs> oh my okay, God. So, okay. <laughs> you are the CEO and founder of the United Partners Network, which is basically an international network born in Sofia, the wonderful city of wisdom, straight from Bulgaria, the country of hearts. And you build it from there into the world. True. It's true. a network okay. of independent agencies. Yeah. Just to keep the true entrepreneurial spirit. Mm, that was wise. And the last thing is, mm, I, uh, you help a lot of female entrepreneurs who are coming from East Europe. And they're really like, you're supporting them so much. I just heard this. I just, uh, a lot of people said, yeah, yeah, like Maria always supports me. There must be something in it. Is that true? That's true. This is one of the projects that we have now on the table. We really mm. want to help Eastern European female leaders to play on the global stage. Thank God I have you on stage. Mm. <laughs> so this were just assumption, but I was quite lucky. Well, how about you introduce yourself? What, what, what is like, I think this is a better way. Like the stage is yours. Yeah, I would like to introduce myself with my three main roles, I think. Uh, the first one is, okay, I will start with the family role. I'm a mother and, and a wife, and uh, I love that. I love spending time with the family, and um, unfortunately, it's not so much when you're an entrepreneur, but I still try to make some time. Uh, and the second one is my EO role. I fell in love in EO. Um, 2017 in January when I discovered it and since then my journey has been like a, an amazing journey completely different from the journey before I was the founding member of uh, EO Southeast Europe and um, yeah and the first president for the first two years and now currently I am a uh, member engagement director for EO Europe mm. and this is a volunteer job I want to give back because I believe that giving back is the new black. So the third role is as a CEO and founder of United Partners. And it's been an amazing 25 years journey, discovering my passion and the way I run the business because I started by loving, loving communications. But then you realize when you're an entrepreneur that it's not only about the subject that you love, it's managing people, managing finances, and it's been a long journey discovering all these things. Mm. Almost there, thanks to you. I kind of learned a lot the last few years, mm. so I'm grateful. 
Mm. So oh, we have a president, ex, uh, an ex-president meeting today. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, he's like, we're twins here too. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that. When you said, when you start a company and you grow it, and over time, this, this thing you love the most is blurred with other things you have to do. Yeah, true. But this was a discovery. When you start the company, you think that you gonna do this because you love it and then a lot of other small things that you don't like then appear in your life <laughs> mm. and and was it like when did you this i think is a really interesting journey and i can totally relate to that this where did you feel that this love like what was no actually what did you love in the beginning it's really interesting yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I actually I realized many years later that that it was meant to be when I because when I was in school, I was constantly organizing all the classmates into events, into plays and things like that. It's just mm -hmm. coming naturally. I've been there. And then later on, I discovered that this is my passion, communications, PR marketing. There, there we go. Hmm. And which task did you like the most? The creative part. Mm. You know, the aha moment. When you're creating a strategy and then you are digging into find a big idea that you can wrap everything around that idea. And it's a long process. In the beginning, I was like, oh, I need this idea right now. And when you try really hard and it's not coming, and it's very, very frustrating. But then when... It's the right time, the right moment, you have the right elements, and the idea comes. This moment, the aha moment, when the big idea is born, it's, oh my God, the best, one of the best moments in life, oh. yeah, in my life. <laughs> mm, I just embraced this moment because this is when, the, when you, it hits you, and it's this second, and we, we all go over it often too fast. Do you celebrate mm -hmm. these moments? I, I now kind of learn to do that uh, mm. yeah, and embrace the moment, be mindful and like think about this. Oh my God, what just happened? I'm so happy. Let's give a moment or a couple of moments to think about this and to enjoy and to, you know, to celebrate. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. This is... Um... And when you have these moments and then this, you, you had your, these moments of creativity and now you, I see them such a, so holy. And now you said, then you said, yeah, but my journey continued. Couldn't you transform this creativity into new, uh, like into new things when you changed your roles and your agency? What I realized that in the beginning of my journey, I thought that I have to know everything. And I was like mm. staying late with some Excel sheets and I totally and truly hate Excel, you know. That's okay, definitely there's, not. There's no creativity there. <laughs> 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 totally. But I was forcing mm. myself, I have to learn this. I have to learn how to do the balance sheets. I have to learn how to do this and that. And we, and later on with my your journeys and discoveries, I realized that when you don't know something and you have your strength somewhere else, you focus on that. And then you hire people that have other strengths that you don't have. But it took it me was it many, important many years. For, yeah. And was it important for that, that you personally learned to do that? Oh, until the moment I believe that I have to know everything. Yes. But it's, was taking so much of my energy mm. that if I have used that energy for what I'm good at and my creative, uh, you know, sessions or strategies, or what I like and what I'm good at, I think that I would have made much more and much faster progress, to be honest. So you're saying if you may let go earlier and don't learn everything, you would have been made progress faster. 
Yeah. If you if I knew my strengths and I focus on using my strengths to grow the business mm. and myself, then things would have been much easier. But I was stubborn and my husband still tells me that I'm super stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm going to learn this and this and I'm going to learn lead generation and this and that. It's like, why? This is not my thing. You have your zone with your strengths and you flourish when you're there. And instead of investing, and when you invest the wrong resources in the wrong things, you become miserable. The people around you too, because they see that you're just stubborn. You don't learn fast. You don't do any good progress. Mm. So it's, yeah, it's kind of a torture for, for yourself and for the people around you, mm. I think. Yeah, I mean, like, I think, in, in, like, my observation is, like, we have this, I think there's this 80-20. I need to know every job 20%. Like, yeah, true. But I don't have to learn, but I have to pick the one I want to learn the 80. Exactly. And focus your energy there yeah. and keep learning, keep getting better. And, yeah, I feel that I later in my journey, <laughs> I learned that and I'm super, and you know, you enjoy the moment of learning as well because I didn't enjoy the mo the moments of learning of Excel sheets. Yeah? That was mm. not the joy. But now when I know what I want, my strengths are, and I'm constantly learning new things about it, it's such a joy mm. in the process of learning and the process of doing. Mm. I learned or I observed that there is different learning types. There's like the ones that love reading or YouTube. Some people like to work quality time, like one-on-one -on -one or classes. There's like different kinds of learning, which I thought I realized, okay, I don't like Excel either, but if I learn it visually or I see a, if someone explains to me visually with a principle and all that, I learn it super fast. If I just have to hear, duh, 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 this is how it goes. Oh, my brain is full of data and it's, I cannot transfer it in a picture and I don't get it. It's so hard for me. How about you? Right. Well, I, I like to read, like, I don't know, learning by reading. And I have my Kindle is my best friend. So I take notes, underline the things that I like with some comments and then i use an app called read wise and where i can see all my notes that i have taken from a book or thing and mm -hmm. when i'm yeah when i'm i need the, the source from a certain book i can easily get into a page with all my notes and i see what really striked me what i wanted to remember what i wanted to use in the future either in in my professional personal journey so that's my my way that's a great hack actually i love this because you can cross reference and you can always go back absolutely wow i love this <laughs> good. Mm. happy to share it's a good mm. yeah and um so where we can also later on like share this link in the comments i like this, uh, this With pleasure. I think it sounds really good yeah it's been helping mm. me a lot because before that when i was reading like hard copies you just underline but then you have no clue where it is True. <laughs> notes and stuff like it's oh, very yeah. very difficult so i was very happy when i discovered that mm. i would like to talk about your hairdresser <laughs> so Why? because <laughs> I know it's not in your hometown. You moved. You moved to a different yeah. town. You moved to the wonderful city of? Barcelona. Mm, to Barcelona, mm. from Sofia to Barcelona. So how is it to be a, a woman from East Europe to, um, to move to, um, to Barcelona? Well, it's a big move for me because I never been living abroad. My husband is Swedish, so when we got together, he moved from Sweden to Sofia, from Stockholm to Sofia. And we've been talking for many, many years that we love Barcelona and one day we want to try. And um, yeah, it just came this moment after the pandemic where you realize that 
two years we've been working from home and um, nowadays things shifted and you can deliver value from whatever. And we adopted in our company a new strategy, excellence from anywhere. So it's not oh. <laughs> oh. so it's not where you are, it's what you deliver. And also the second part was I wanted to help my kids to get a better education and better environment, health environment and uh, everything. So it's for a better future, hopefully. And also I want to try to live in the city to challenge myself. I don't like to be too much in my comfort zone. So <laughs> been growing the company, it's like, what's the next challenge to get out of the comfort zone and to get better? And yeah, there we go. Mm. We just moved a few months ago and I'm enjoying it. I also became a member of EO Barcelona. So mm. I have a new community here with entrepreneurs, which is super cool. And yeah, it's, uh, it's nice. exciting. Of course, like, yeah. yeah. Of course, there is uh, like uh, a small uh, thing that it, like you mentioned, the hairdresser, because when you live somewhere, you you have so many small things that are just like fitting together and you know everything. And when you move uh, abroad or somewhere where you don't know, you know, these simple small things, it's just disturbing. But it's getting there slowly, slowly. Mm. Yeah. When I moved to the US with my wife, it's... The first week, we're just exciting. And then we realized that the core system wasn't there. Like you said, we didn't know which hat. No, we, we had to hairdresser to go. Um, and so because if life goes beyond restaurants to normal <laughs> yeah. things, it's kind of like you need to figure out a lot of things. And it's not yeah. always easy. And people are kind and helpful. But they don't know my the, my taste or my style and I cannot read the codes of this culture. So I don't know if the best wine store looks really crappy, but it's really amazing. So yeah. I try to compare my culture with that. But I think this is exactly where we grow, don't we? Definitely, definitely. But now I kind of rediscovered the power of community because mm. when I came here and I didn't know all these small things, now when I just ask a question of our EO community and I can get like a, how to get a babysitter, how to get the best restaurants, how to uh, get the best, best uh, cultural events in town. And yeah, it's really, really nice. Okay. I wish I would have been in such a community when I moved. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there so, was actually, yeah. there was no one in LA when we moved. Okay. Yeah. One friend, I, I got one friend. And um, so that's, that's true. This helped, but having a community is also like people have time and it's, and they open doors probably. And exactly. um, I think that's, For everything, you know, if you need a lawyer, if you need like, um, you know, even cleaning service, everybody's helping. And this is, I think that's, that's why I love you. Hmm. People now looking backwards, when you say this, I mean, you said like you spoke a lot of long time. You spoke about this dream to move to Barcelona, and now yeah, I don't know how much resistance there were there. And we can think it's super brave with your two boys, and so and they're still like five or six, and so five years and old. with the yeah. family and your office still in uh, in Sofia. Gee, this is um, it's a big move. But now that you made it, and you arrived in this community. Looking back, was it appropriate to wait so long? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I think that actually the pandemic made me believe, made us all believe that being stuck in one office all together is not a guarantee for success. And mm. we had a discussion before the pandemic. Shall we have like a hybrid way of working because our work is creative work. We don't yeah. do anything, you know, that specifically requires you to be in a certain place. Uh, and then people were not sure because you don't know how things will work no. in terms of managing people. But then a few weeks later, the pandemic happened and then we managed so quickly to organize ourselves and to work perfectly fine. Last year, we kind of doubled our revenue remotely never happened to us 
And it's not where you are. It's like what kind of people you get together. And I think that the last two years, or not two, more than two years, like five years maybe, we've been working with my management team super hard on the culture, building the culture. Hmm. And when you have the right people on board, then it just things happen. And I'm so blessed and so grateful that we managed to build an amazing culture and we have amazing people. And this is good enough. And I trust them and they trust me and they support me in my decision. And then I support them as well. And then things are very, very, very easier then Mm. to take such decisions. Okay, so you said, because you said before, we created a, like a, a new mission or a culture of delivering excellence from anywhere. But this is built on a five-year work where you put hard work into the culture. So now right. that this is possible. Right. Okay, so what is like, if you want to share your secret sauce of building an amazing culture, if you like. So if I were like, I'm a newbie to culture. No, okay, I'm not. But let's say, I'm a. Let's say we are all a little, kind of a little experts. We are not. It's not experts for dumb culture for dummies. But so give us like three nuggets, like we should, which were surprising for you, or you say like this is really should take care of. Yeah. Well, everything started. Maybe you have heard this famous quote: "Strategy, culture, eat strategy for breakfast." Yeah. I heard that five years ago, obviously, not many years ago, but five years ago, I thought like, is this true? Shall I try? Then I started reading a lot about culture, what culture is, about the values, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we had like a discovery process of our values. And of course, there are quite a lot in entrepreneurship. They're influenced by the entrepreneur (laughs) somehow (laughs) but you find like um, values that are matching between the core team and your personal values and then uh, we started pushing these values and when you started working on you know values as like what's uniting us and what makes us Mm. you know one team then some people uh, naturally kind of uh, left the company or were pushed away because of that, because they didn't recognize themselves in that values. And later on, what I realized, we started making even a questionnaire for new employee first to pass the culture fit questionnaire. Mm. And when we discover that it's a culture fit, then you can go on the next stage with the rest of the uh, interviews, etc. Oh, I love this. Yeah, <laughs> and we've been thinking a lot, and I've been uh, reflecting on that journey quite a lot. And what I realized is that when we didn't, we were not aligned on the values. We spend a lot of time, um, discussions, conflicts, backstabbing, a lot of you know not so pleasant and uh, efficient activities uh, in the company. And that time is our time that we charge. And we make money out. And when you spend like 30 or 40% of your time in activities that are not bringing a value to the company and creating unhealthy cultures, this is financial loss. Hmm. And when, I was like, I didn't know that, you know. But yeah. later on, I realized that. Now we are so much more stable financially than before. But that's because we are aligned by values. We don't have any, I would say, any real conflict. There might be arguments, disagreements, but it's in a very healthy way. There is nothing that we're going to lose a lot of energy and time managing internal conflicts. And that's this group of people against that group of people. That's not happening anymore. Mm. And, uh, and, and now I want to say that this is a great proof for me, for me that culture is strategy for Brexit. If you don't have a culture... I mean, even if you have the best strategy, yeah, it's not going to be easy and not going to be happening. But now, but now I must say that uh, there is a pure connection between having a good culture and the bottom line and the happiness in the office. Because five years ago, we started, we were thinking, how are we going to measure that? 
Okay, so we started okay. discovered the ENPS. It's called Employee Net Promoter Score, which is from minus hundred to plus hundred. And we started with it was like five years ago plus five. Now we are almost plus ninety, which is like topping the chart, and it's almost impossible for service business because service business has a lot of external. Um, connections and influence that you cannot really always, always uh, control, mm. you know, but uh, I'm very glad that this is happening. And um, the ENPS is like, oh, it's like the NPS. You said how likely you, you will recommend this company as a place to work for a friend or a colleague or yeah. And so if someone, let's say the team, there is like, I think this is an amazing Uh, story of starting from the culture standpoint and growing. And they said from five to over 90. So now if, let's say, if I would be an employee on your side and I want to have your attention, because Maria is probably really busy, I would just score bad to get, I want to be listened. Like do like people, oh yeah, or it could also say the other way. It, like when, when you see things are dropping, which is then on an individual level, I mean, you can see like on a general, but it's probably like certain individuals. Do you speak to them or what happens? Well, the other good thing that we have is like a very strict uh, meeting rhythm. So I have a weekly meetings with my management team. They're amazing. And uh, we have created a very safety for people to express themselves, to express their feelings. So we don't hold anything back because this is actually what's, what's creating problems later on. So mm. whenever there is some issue at an early stage, we sit all together and we share what you feel, how you feel like that. So yeah, we encourage people and give them the safe space. They know it's safe to share. And they don't have a problem to share their emotions and everything. I mean, emotional say or psychology safety is the key point of great cultures. Why, yeah. like, I know why is this the key driver for your success? Because I think that when people are not are feeling threatened when they gonna express themselves then this is creating a very unhealthy environment when people can say without hurting you for example they know how to communicate and how to give you feedback without making you feel bad i think this is the key because we all need the feedback feedback is something that helps us grow and get better but given the right way And this is one thing that is missing in, I think, in schools, especially, I don't know how it's in the Western countries, in Germany, but in, in Eastern Europe, schools are very much focused on hard skills. And kids, they don't learn the basic things, the life skills. And feedback is one very important life mm -hmm. skill that you need to yeah. receive and to give. And without this, you cannot grow. Yeah. And in the school, feedback is more like criticism. And then you just feel bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. Yeah, the same topic here is, is missing. I mean, if there yeah. are some schools are getting better, I think it's really changed. So school and, and especially soft learning, soft skills, there is great improvement. Yeah, I'm hoping to see that more and more mm -hmm. in schools and in universities. Yeah. I would really look love to, because I love the, the approach, but to make it really tangible, like when I go into your office and I feel overwhelmed and so on and so, how do you, what is this safe space? Is this a, a letter box? I can drop a letter or there's a phone I can always call or how do you, how do you like really, like really like practical? What is right. like, How is this working? Well, now we are more remotely, I mean, hybrid, let's say, working. But uh, we have created like a very nice space in the office where people can chat and talk to each other formally and informally. And also we have like a chat group where people like always on, they can share what they feel. And people are like, 
it's you, you can feel the spirit by the way of communication, the, the the tone of voice. People are communicating a lot with gifts, you know, because it's very hard nowadays to express emotions with typing. Mm. <laughs> Right, yeah. so people I- involve and mix text with gifts to show their emotions, mm. and this is super helpful actually to to understand how you feel. No matter that you are, you know, in the, by the seaside or somewhere else and working from somewhere else, I still can feel you somehow. Mm. So you're you're saying when I have a topic, I will. Join uh, express my topics and scarce uh, like uh, like in positive or negative or scarcities and I share this direct in the group. Well, you can do this. You can call me directly. You yeah. can call. We encourage people to talk to each other, not to wait somebody to solve an issue, but just like okay, if you and this is in all the conversation and the regular meetings. If there is an issue, talk to the person directly, immediately. Mm. Call. So, so you really you you establish that in your culture, talk about issues. Issues are a good way to progress. Emotions are important. This is our culture, and do that. Yes, and we have done a lot of trainings in that direction. We had uh, with another EO member from London an after action review training. How you and how you create a safe environment to analyze a project or something and to learn from it it's like so many people are going through different learning by doing experiences that imagine if this learning you is collected and everybody can learn from each other's learning Mm -hmm. and we try to create this kind of new system that people can learn from each other's experiences through their projects in the company and this is a like fast forward to growth because it's so mm-hmm. much easier when you have done a, a great project or a failure project i can learn from you and next time whatever i'm doing i'm going to be better and so we created this structure and this um uh, it's called like um, um a group of uh, experts that are facilitating these uh, meetings in the right way so we can learn from each other after each project Mm. Is there a certain, uh, like, when I would like to implement that in my, to my company, what kind of, what should I train my people? Or what kind of, was there something that was like, because there's a lot of mythologies, a lot of people out there who say like, from, we make your team more agile, we make the, the, the safe organizers, the soft skill people, but if said like what was the most effective or most eye opening to the people i think that for me one the most important thing is that we all do it together i mm. don't do the culture to you we sit down and we work it out together and everybody is involved and everybody can say or suggest what we need to improve for example when we were having the like the evaluation, annual evaluation, most probably most of the companies have that. And then uh, one of the of the guys in the office said, guys, we cannot have this like once a year and then give examples who behaved how uh, during the whole year. You have to like have a notebook with things that you have to keep track of what, who is doing what and how in order to be able to give exact examples at the end of the year and to be, otherwise it's just feelings. I feel that you did this great or you didn't do this great. So then we sit that all of us, it's like, okay, let's hack this. This is obviously not working. So what shall we do? We need like an old, a system where we can have an always own feedback, always own yeah. feedback. So, and we introduced a platform called GTM Hub, which is, we have, and you can also see the big picture where you are because, okay, I'm a designer. How my work is influencing the, the whole, you know, agency ecosystem. And mm-hmm. then you have this now, we have everything and everybody has access to that. We have the our goals and we have the specific goals of the people and we have also um, like um, badges and everybody can receive a badge with comment for something that he or she has done and it's real time. You can do it always on. And now, and people can see at the end of the year who has got what, how many badges is connected either to the professional 
like work or to your values as well. So it's encouraging each other to be better in what we do, both like a professional mm. and both like values living. So, Perfect. yeah. Mm. And one last question about values, which puzzles me. When you you start a company and it's so, and, and your company is really big now, you grew, grew, grew. And when certain values are good for certain stages, that's my thesis. My thesis is certain values are great for certain stages, but then the company grows. By for example, and uh, for example, yeah, you have a certain saying like uh, we see each other, we care about each other. Because I'm, hmm, is this a scalable value? Maybe hmm, depends. Can be. Yeah, you can always like, but I don't feel it anymore. I meant it differently. And um, yeah. so, uh, well, how like how did you work through that? Thank you so much for this question. We just uh, had maybe a two months uh, project, internal project led by our head of uh, insights and ana analysis. And they had the interviews with all the people to rediscover the values, to make sure that with growing the company, we adjust or rediscover the values. So I'm curious because the project, uh, the report is coming very soon. And there was a lot of uh, like uh, interviews and also uh, role play games to discover how we treat each other, how we uh, how we think, how we behave, how we support each other, etc. So it was like a, a fun journey just to make sure that we don't, like what you said, the values that we have are relevant and will help us to grow because they might be the wrong values to grow. Yeah, and I think this is like, thank you that you say it because people always like saying about values, see it so static but it is they can evolve and this is what a lot of people um i work with like no we need to hold on the values but then no but we are there's a change it's a change in time and the circumstances are different we are the same people mm -hmm. and i trust that we can find a new value set or adapt our values slightly that it fits the new times and also um our journey that we don't yeah, stop each exactly. other. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> mm. You can, should we drink something? We can have a drink. Um, if you like, uh, you want some water? I have the water. Between yeah, it's good. I, I spilled mine. So it's somewhere. I don't know. How did you do I, that? I put it, I, I planted it. Uh, I planted a tree now. No, just kidding. <laughs> it's for the good cause, yeah. Ah, it's for the good cause. Good cause is a good topic. Mm. We talked about the topic of culture, but now let's talk about culture in the sense of country and mm. in areas where we come from. I'm born in Italy. We have an Austrian passport living in Germany. I'm a mess of culture. I don't... So by the end, it was raised in, in Germany, but by two foreigners. And um, because of Italian and Austrian. But so, and you were born in Sofia, or where are you born? Yeah, I'm born in Blagojevgrad. It's on very close to the Greek border. So my grandma is actually Greek. Mm. Uh, they escaped from Greece when Greece was much more poor than Bulgaria. 1921, I think, and yeah, so they moved to to Bulgaria. But I also, actually like you. I'm a mixed genes. I just did yeah, the DNA well, test, <laughs> so I have like yeah. I discovered I have Italian, Greek, <laughs> and other <laughs> nationalities in me. So yeah, in, in, in journey. But uh, uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's. I think that what I've been to, uh, talking with my my parents is that. Uh, Unfortunately, they've been living most of their life in in the, in the communist regime, and uh, and somehow this regime is trying to put make them believe in things that later on in their life appear to be 
um, false or not real. So imagine spending all your life or main, main, the main part of your life believing in one thing that at one point is just like disappearing. And I think that this has been quite damaging for our generation as well, or maybe it's been like booster, booster, I don't know, Mm -hmm. one of those, because uh, then you are from a, from coming from a regime where things were, there was no entrepreneurship before the the fall of the, the, the wall. So uh, when I started the company, it was just, like very very soon after the change of 1997 and um, entrepreneurship like non-existing it, PR was not not there PR there was only propaganda you know so propaganda is like one way communication and then PR is two way communication and it's a completely new thing and starting the company and competing on learning on it, not competing because at that point we were not competing but you know uh, being eager to hear from the countries where PR has been like and marketing has been there forever like uh, London and uh, US and yeah Germany so it's been an interesting journey I became a member of the International PR Association very early Mm -hmm. after I started the company and it was uh, a very you know strange feeling because I'm a woman from Eastern Europe becoming uh, in the even I started you know, applying for the leadership of the of the organization, I wanted to to grow. I was hungry for learning and growth, and there was no internet when I started, so it was very hard to get information: how to do the business, how to do this, how to write a press release, how to send the press release, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So many questions, and this was one of the ways to access all this knowledge and information. That's why I joined that community, the professional community, and. I was like, there was almost nobody from Eastern Europe. And uh, there was this, you know, you're feeling very, even ashamed that you're coming from that part of the world, you know, because you don't have the knowledge, you cannot compete, you're not as competent as the people that you meet, and you want to learn faster. This is, I think, an engine maybe also, because you, you're, you want to learn faster to get to their level or closer to their level, so you can be sort of equal. Not equal, but sort of, yeah. So um, I think mm. that um, reflecting now, this might have been like a really good push for me to learn faster and to get to that level of professional level that I am now faster because I had to catch up with the countries that are really, really ahead of us. And uh, later on, uh, I gained the trust in this community. And uh, luckily, uh, they, the trust actually resulted in the fact that I was the first president of this international organization that's coming from Eastern Europe and woman. Mm, that's so cool. Yeah. And did you feel it was this your mind? Like, could you, like, was this a story in your head that you were not so competing, or was were they really telling you? Could you? Mm, I, that, that that's a bit, it's a question for I don't know million dollars. But I think that it's um fifty fifty. I think that there were people who was who were like um, by their behavior can show you that you know you're um, uh, not third world country but second world country. Let's put it that way. And there were some other people that were truly supportive that they wanted to give you a hand and help you. To, to grow, to develop, and we're ready to like mentor you, to give you all the knowledge. And uh, yeah, there's, um, I had this kind of people around me there as well. Hmm. And so now you're helping also other female entrepreneurs uh, from Bulgaria or from Eastern Europe um, to overcome this, yeah, also like these, let's say, false beliefs, right? Yeah, I think that this is like the self-esteem and believing in yourself is super important. But it's very hard to believe in yourself um, until you kind of hear it from here and there. It's like, am I really good? You need some sort of like proof to people to tell, yeah, the campaign that you did is good. This is a good strategy. You, The quality of your work is very good. And that's why I became also a member of a jury of the International PR Awards here and there. I wanted to make sure that I see that we are doing a good job. 
and yeah. you, you you don't know unless you see it and you judge the com- campaigns from all over the world. And then I see it, it's like, yeah, we are good. And this year we won the best international campaign. We are coming from Eastern Europe and mm. we won the best international. So congrats, congrats. And thank you, thank you. But, but what I love is you didn't fall into the victim trap you observed you said like oh you made you had this observation oh they were differently trained and so on so you grabbed for the the hands of mentors you learned and i love that you really took this position of you know i become a uh, a, like jury member and i first like "Mm, interesting this was the point she knew like oh they accepted me but this was my false belief and i then i listen continue listen to your your sharing is No, by seeing the actual work, this is when I knew we were good. And I exactly. love that. Thank you for taking me on this trip. And I I just re- uh, did, yeah, thank you for my, uh, so much. I think this is really inspiring. And I'm um, so congratulations that you won the award. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. This is also a very, I was like, uh, you have to promise that you will keep delivering that. I think it's uh, it's an honor at the same time. It's a challenge that you have to keep doing that. Perfect. So I think from a conclusion from today, I would like to have a a short um, meet up with the wise you who talks to your younger self. Mm-hmm. So now that today that you're this mature, wonderful woman, you went all this journey. And what is this? What you would have you have wished to be known before, when hmm. you were like, I don't know, when you started your journey. My advice, what would it be? Yeah, uh, you. What is your best advice you would give to yourself? I will give the the one and only best advice: find your tribe. You need uh, like-minded people that you push you grow as a person as a, and, and as a professional and find your, I have like my professional tribe, which is the international PR association. And that's the professionals that I surround myself with and learn from them and grow. And then it's my EO tribe. It's the entrepreneurs, people like me that own the business and they want to grow the business. They want to grow the people. And this is the other tribe. These two tribes. Uh, if you have this, you have everything. And of course, The family is your private life tribe. Be there. It's like calmness, life, love. Maria, there's not nothing more to say. Thank you so much. It was a delight to have you on the podcast. And um, thank you thank so you. much. Thank you so much. Been lovely being here. And hopefully people will get uh, inspired and learn something from me as well. They will.